Food and beverage industry has very unique ERP needs. So which are the top 10 food and beverage ERP systems in 2024? That's what we are going to discuss in this video. So let's dive in. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now, here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hello everyone, my name is Sam Gupta. I am principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. We help our clients with enterprise uh, technology strategy, enterprise technology selection, change management, as well as implementation. On that note, let's go back to today's topic, which is going to be top 10 food and beverage ERP systems in 2024. This list is a new list that we have launched this year. So we are not going to have much of the comparison from the last year. Uh, also, when you look at the food and beverage industry, how do we define this? So number one, any of the food and beverage manufacturers, distributors, retailers, consulting companies are going to be part of this. Sometimes they could have many different business models, such as your process in manufacturing is going to be the key component of these systems, but they might also have discrete processes that you might require as part of these verticals. For example, let's say if they are going to have a very small packaging line or subsidiary that does packaging. So the ERP needs for those industries are going to be very different in general. The distribution retailers in the F&B space also have very different processes. Generally, they have to maintain their fleet. So their TMS supply chain processes are going to be very different as well. So the criteria that we use to compile this list is product share, the acquisition strategy. Are they acquiring any of these ERP vendors? The product that they have acquired, is it to augment their food and beverage capabilities or are they acquiring for something else? So we look at all of those factors. We look at product roadmap, community, ecosystem, win rate, technology strategies, as well as the investors. So all of these factors combine and that's how we compile this list. So now let's look at the list. So number 10 on our list is ECI GCOM. So some more comments related to the way ERP systems are designed in the food and beverage space. So number one distinction that you're going to find in this space is some systems are going to be designed only for retail and distribution. They are not going to be as detailed in their manufacturing capabilities. Then you are going to have the smaller food and beverage systems. They generally are going to flatten some of the ERP layers. So those layers are not going to be as scalable, but they might bundle a lot of different capabilities, especially in the small and medium size spaces where they might have limited implementation budget. So you are going to find a lot more capabilities as part of the suite, but layers might not be as scalable for the mature ERP capabilities. If you're looking for simply transactional capabilities, then these systems might be a great fit. So if you look at ECI DCOM, ECI DCOM is a very small system. For the most part, it is designed for the smaller food and beverage companies. One of the trends that you're going to find in this particular space is that these companies tend to be very heavy in a DTC as well as e-commerce. So they are going to require a lot more e-commerce capabilities in general. Uh, the other strength that, we, that you have for ECI DCOM is they're going to have a lot more last mile capabilities for FMB companies when you look at capabilities such as lot tracking when you are going to be in that pharma neutral suitable uh, space. In those spaces, you are going to require all of those. You are going to have DST capabilities, proof of delivery. All of those capabilities are going to be important in these spaces. And for smaller companies, they might not have budget to integrate a specialized TMS system. So that's where ECID Com could be a great fit. The other strength that you have for ECID Com is the financial backing of a PE company as well as technical architecture. So financial backing could be a great fit from the product perspective, but you are not going to get the same support that you would be getting from a mom and pop. So that's going to be a con when you are dealing with any systems owned by private equity. So the limitations that you are going to get with ECI DCOM is only suitable for smaller food and beverage companies. Uh, it is not designed for even companies that are going to be probably $100 million in revenue. Uh, there are other systems on this list that may be better fit for this. So ECI DCOM, the sweet spot 
for that is probably going to be anywhere below 50 million dollars is probably a sweet spot for them the kind of logos that they have won the other um, advantages with ecid.com is that ability to support diversified business models especially in the food and beverage spaces so if you are going to have you know pharma flavor if you are going to have the food manufacturing flavor you are going to have e-commerce flavor all of those can be supported as part of the data as well as process model but then it is going to be slightly weaker in the core supply chain erp capabilities it is not really designed for those if you might get the transactional basic transactional capabilities so if you're looking at this as your first erp system then it could be a great fit so that's number 10. number nine on our list is syspro and syspro does really well in the small food and beverage companies whether you are going to be manufacturer distributors and syspro is probably one of the smaller systems that is going to have all of those uh, discrete as well as the process manufacturing capabilities as part of the same product but it is not a very global product in general it is designed for very small one entity centric businesses in those it could be a great fit the other strength that you're going to find with syspro is the erp layers compared to your eci decom are going to be far richer in general uh, so syspro could be a better fit for slightly bigger system when you are looking for scalable layers for your pricing discounting the core inventory capabilities they are going to be far richer with your uh, syspro the limitations that you are going to run into with syspro is only suitable for smaller fmb companies but compared to your ecidcom it is probably going to require a lot more consulting effort because of those layers that is going to provide you the scalability so as you move up the spectrum the implementation dollar typically increases because of the richness of the data as well as process model so syspro is going to be slightly more complex compared to your decom but it is still a very small system syspro is not going to have as deep suite capabilities so if you are looking for all of those e-commerce centric capabilities or you are looking for root accounting etc all of those is not going to be part of the suite you might have third party add-ons that might be able to do that but it is not going to be part of the suite it is not going to be maintained managed by syspro so again you are going to increase the implementation consulting effort in enabling the same capabilities that you are going to find with systems such as your ecid decom and syspro has just started their cloud journey so technically it might not be as mature you might still have issues with the product so that's number nine number eight on our list is sap s4 hana sap s4 hana compared to your eci decom syspro is a very large system it is designed for enterprises so if you are going to be very large globally operated enterprise then sap s4 hana is going to be a great system so with sap s4 hana you are looking at all of those core erp capabilities but the last mile functionality is not going to be as rich but at the same time when you are slightly more diverse business or you are looking to consolidate a lot of different business models as part of your private equity portfolio then sap s4 hana can accommodate a lot more not only from the food and beverage perspective but it can grow after that as well especially if you are going to be very active in the m a game and you don't know how your business model is going to evolve so that's where sap s4 hana is going to provide all of those generalized capabilities but you are not going to find the industry specific capabilities that you might find with slightly more descriptive suite centric systems so the other strength that you have with SAP S4 HANA, it is really designed for those financially controlled companies for governance. When you are going to be publicly traded, you are looking for a system that can provide you the end-to-end -end financial traceability for publicly traded companies. SAP S4 HANA is going to be far more natural for that. The solid best of breed options, especially when you look at food and beverage centric businesses, they are going to have far deeper need for your warehouse management, EWM, uh, as well as uh, the TMS processes, all of those going to be integrated as part of the suite so the limitations that you are going to run into with sap s4 hana is that number one it is not an smb solution so if you are smb and you are very limited in your implementation budget sap s4 hana may not be the best fit for you the last mile functionality integrations are not going to be as rich and then you might feel if you are smb then the financial control uh, may feel over bloated so again if you're a very small company then sap s4 hana is not a solution for you so that's number eight <music> 
number seven on our list is Oracle uh, Cloud ERP. And Oracle Cloud ERP system is very similar to your SAP S4 HANA. Oracle Cloud ERP does slightly better in retail centric spaces uh, than your core distribution manufacturing centric spaces. The RMS component that Oracle is going to have or the TMS component Oracle is going to have, they have a lot more logos in the retail centric businesses. But for the most part, these businesses utilize Oracle Cloud ERP primarily as the corporate financial ledger. They don't necessarily utilize that for the core ERP processes. But there are going to be certain verticals where they had installations of JD Edwards. So for example, pharma verticals, they use Oracle Cloud ERP because they are coming from the JD Edward installations and JD Edward was very rich in those pharma-centric, food-centric verticals. That's why Oracle Cloud ERP is going to have slightly richer capabilities, the core capabilities, the data model friendlier for your food and beverage businesses. The other strength that you are going to get with Oracle Cloud ERP is that the talent ecosystem is going to be there, the product is well adopted, and then it can support diversified business model, not only just within food and beverage spectrum, but it can go beyond that as well. The limitations that you're going to run into with Oracle Cloud ERP is the last mile functionality is not going to be as rich as some of the operational system. For example, with ECIDCOM, even though that is not the enterprise grade system, but you will get a lot more last mile integrations as well as last mile functionality as part of the suite. The other limitations that you have with Oracle Cloud ERP are very similar to your SAP S4 HANA, which is going to be your over bloated financial control processes and not really designed for SMB companies. So that's number seven. Now, number six on our list is in four Cloud Suite M3. And M3 targets food and retail centric businesses, especially in the upper mid market, as well as the lower enterprise space, especially if you're going to be manufacturer, then in four cloud seat M3 is probably one of the strongest system in the retail as well as manufacturing spaces for food and beverage companies. The strength that you are going to get within four cloud suite M3 is the international supply chain, collaboration processes, global operations, all of those are going to be pre-baked as part of the suite that will require a lot more heavy lifting with your vanilla ERP system, such as your Oracle ERP Cloud or SAP S4 HANA. But in four cloud M, uh, suite M3 is not necessarily proven in those enterprise workloads. At this point of time, if we compare their logos, they are not going to have as many logos in those enterprise spaces as with your Oracle uh, Cloud ERP as well as SAP S4 HANA. So the focus of in four cloud suite M3 is going to be on companies which are going to be limited on budget and they are looking for slightly more prescriptive architecture on a business model that is not evolving as much. In those cases, in four cloud suite M3 could be a great fit. And the integrations that you are going to find within four cloud suite M3 are going to be very flavored. They are going to be for very specific micro verticals. So again, your implementation is going to be much cheaper in general, but then you are boxing yourself in those specific industries. So it might have challenges in scaling to different verticals, if, especially if you are going to be active with M&A or you are growing your business model to other industries. The other limitations that you have with your Info Cloud Suite M3 is the UI is very legacy. The experience is not going to be as rich as some of the richer cloud native systems, such as your ECI DCOM. And the ecosystem and marketplace is limited as well. It's not going to be as prevalent as your vanilla ERP systems. So that's number six. Number five on our list is QAD. And QAD has very similar positioning as your in four cloud suite M3, which is going to be for your upper mid large food and beverage manufacturing companies. But primarily QAD is a very discrete centric um, uh, ERP system. It has the process centric capabilities as well. There are going to be many different systems that are going to have both. But in general, when you look at the capabilities of these systems, if they are really designed for your discrete centric workflows, then they might have a very little chemical centric process and for which they might require those process centric capabilities. So generally their process capabilities are going to be leaner. But when you look at food centric system, for example, let's say if you look at Info Cloud Suite M3, their process centric capabilities are going to be far deeper. The way their supply chain planning is going to work is their attribute centric capabilities are going to be uh, far deeper than your discrete centric uh, systems. But QAD 
does really well in the food and beverage uh, manufacturing companies. So the other limitations that you're going to running into with QAD is the technical architecture, even though they have announced that they are re-architecting the platform, but that might not be available for the next few years and it might not be as stable. The capabilities that you are going to have in their older code base are going to be far richer in general. So it might take some years before the new architecture rolls out. The other limitation that you are going to get with QAD is the talent ecosystem is not as prevalent as some of the other ERP systems. That's number five. Number four on our list is Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO. And FNO uh, does really well in the upper mid market, lower enterprise segment for the food and beverage uh, centric companies. The strength uh, for Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO is that you are going to get far deeper ERP capabilities. The ERP capabilities are going to be global, but you might not get as many best of breed integrations, best of breed capabilities that you are going to find with slightly more specific systems that are going to be your QADs of the world in four M3s of the world. But here, the advantage of this is going to be when you are looking for slightly more diverse solution, when you are looking for solution in the geographies where talent might not be available with your in four M3, Microsoft is uh, probably going to have that. So that's where Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO could be a great fit. So the other strength with Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO is the core ERP capabilities are going to be far deeper when you are trying to accommodate many different business models. And the pre-integrated best of breed options are going to be available with Microsoft, but they are not going to be as comprehensive, as relevant as you are going to find with in 4 M3. Also, if you compare this with your SAP S4 HANAs of the world uh, or Oracle Cloud ERPs of the world, they are going to have far richer best of breed options. But again, even with them, they might not be as relevant for food and beverage industry. So in general, when you look at the best of breed capabilities, Microsoft does not have as richer capabilities, but they have marketplace where you can find a lot of different options and they have one of the prevalent marketplaces among the ERP vendors. The financial processes are probably going to be over bloated for the SMB food and beverage businesses. So this is not really your SMB solution. It's a large solution. So that's number four. Number three on our list is Aptian Food and Beverage ERP. So when you look at Aptian, it is the fully flavored pre-integrated suite for your food and beverage manufacturers, the kind of capabilities that you are going to find, including the integration with your CAD PLM systems, which tend to be very unique for food and beverage, you are going to find all of that. In fact, when you look at things such as your MES or supply chain planning systems, all of those tend to be very, very, very different for your food and beverage. And with Aptine, you are looking at fully flavored capabilities as part of the suite. The strengths that you are gonna find with Aptine is you have the financial stability of a PE company, but again, you will not find the same support that you will find with any other mom and pop companies. Uh, generally, their support is not gonna be as great. The consulting uh, expertise is not gonna be as great either. So that's where you might need to find a consulting company or the independent ERP consulting company that can help you from the consulting perspective, from the business transformation perspective, but from the product perspective, this could be a complete suite. So it is going to have very similar limitations as your in four M3 or QADs of the world that it is going to be a very focused solution for the diverse uh, business models, it might not be the best fit. And the ecosystem is going to be fairly limited as well as with any other focused solutions. So that's number three. Now, number two on our list is Sage X3. And the way Sage X3 product is designed, it does really well in uh, the pharma space, food and beverage center spaces, whether you are going to be retail manufacturer or distributor for all, all of those, it has been proven until uh, $3 billion in uh, revenue. So that is going to be relevant for your uh, upper mid market as well as the lower enterprise uh, spaces. The strengths that you have with Sage X3 product is the way ecosystem is designed, you are going to find a lot more options, especially even if you look at the consulting companies. Uh, consulting companies are going to have very specific expertise. For example, let's say if you look for companies that are going to have HESAP compliance and they also understand Sage X3, in Sage X3 ecosystem, you can find that. But if you are going to go to an ERP system, that uh, 
does not necessarily have as many installs uh, in uh, uh, the food centric spaces, then you are not going to find those consulting companies that can help you uh, with your HACCP compliance or you are looking for pharma centric validations. All of those capabilities are not going to be present with any other ecosystems, but that's the strength of Sage X3. The strength for Sage X3 is it's really designed for process centric manufacturing companies. It is going to have a discrete component, but the perspective is very process centric. And the other limitations that you're going to have with Sage X3 is that not suitable for a smaller FNB companies. The way product model is designed, uh, it's very accounting focused. It's going to be limiting for these smaller companies that typically care for slightly more operational capabilities uh, as well as pre-baked integration for those companies. Systems such as your ECI DCOM might be a superior fit. And then the ecosystem is going to be very limited as well. The roadmap is unclear from Sage. It's not as committed on this product, but Sage X3 could be a great product for food and beverage companies. That's number two. Now, number one on our list is Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Business Central is very heavily penetrated among F&B companies. It is going to have a lot of add-ons companies. And in fact, Aptin, the product that they have is flavored on top of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. So as such, when you are dealing with Aptin, you might not even need to deal with Microsoft because the underlying layer is you uh, enabled by Microsoft. But as such, you are really buying from Aptin. They are managing all of those integrations. They are managing the additional layers that are going to be enabled on top of your uh, Microsoft. So that's a huge advantage of Microsoft that you have players such as Aptin in their ecosystem that are providing the core IP. But then if you need more capabilities, if your business model is going to be diversified, that's where Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is a great fit for food and beverage companies. The strengths that you are looking at uh, from BC perspective is the data model is friendly for complex needs of FNB. So the way the data model is designed, the FNB companies require very specific data model. The way your layering of the serial and lot number is going to be, if you don't have that at the data model level, you will generally find challenges. You will need to take a lot of shortcuts and that will generally fire back. From the planning perspective, you might have data quality issues. So that is enabled as part of the VC product. And even the systems that are going to claim that they have FNB capabilities, but they might not have the similar layers that are going to be relevant for these FNB companies that are going to be relevant in the regulated spaces. And the supply chain and bin allocation capabilities, all of those are very geared towards F&B companies. So it's very, very, very rich supply chain model as well as uh, the core ERP capabilities. The limitations that you are going to run into is the native support for formulation management is not there. So you are relying on very thick add-on. And if the add-on is not going to be proven, it's not installed as many times as uh, the core product, then it might not be as well documented. It might not be coded properly. And sometimes we have seen scenarios where where in this particular space, you have a lot of different food and beverage add-ons and they try to cram a lot of different functionality as part of the same product. For example, some of these capabilities might reside inside your TMS, but they are trying to fit in as much as possible. And sometimes that just fires back uh, when you are going to have so much functionality. In fact, they have housed some of the very fragile code, for example, EDI integrations as part of these add-ons. And we have seen a lot of implementation challenges. So this is where VC is a great system, but you require a lot of consulting expertise to be able to bet, okay, which add-on is going to be a great fit for your installations. If it is proven, if it is uh, well documented to be able to maintain uh, in the long term. The other limitations that you have with your BC is not necessarily suitable for FNB manufacturers. Again, you would require far thicker uh, add-on if you are going to be, be managing very complex manufacturing on top of your BC system. So that's number one. If you enjoyed this video, we are going to publish the link of a detailed article that is going to have much more comprehensive analysis. So you might want to check that. Also, this podcast is also available in the audio form on Google, Spotify, uh, as well as Apple. So if you have not checked, check there and subscribe if you like. These videos we publish on a weekly basis. So you might want to, want to hit the subscribe button on YouTube if you don't want to miss them. Also, if you have not checked our digital transformation report for 2024, we compile these lists as well as insight as part of the report. So check that out. The link is going to be there in the description. On that note, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. 
For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.